welcome. This is Meryl Fury. I am president and CEO of Plant-Based Nutrition Movement. And today we have a special treat. We're doing an interview with Deepa Deshmukh. She is in DuPage County, correct? And um, she is a registered county. Okay, she's a registered dietitian. Um, she is certified in diabetes care and education specialist, as well as she was selected as one of the top 10 dietitians in the country last year. We're going to be speaking with her about her native country of India and some of the dietary traditions there. I'm so excited. I love talking with Deepa. Always learn something wonderful. Thanks for being with me today, Deepa. No, thank you for the invitation, Meryl. I'm super excited to be here today because we are talking about maternal wellness yes. and maternal health. Yes, yes. So we're going to start with a really broad question and I might like ask you for clarification, but mostly we're going to let Deepa um, educate us about maternal health and, and um, pregnancy and, and how we eat during those times. So Deepa came here from India. How old were you when you arrived in the United States? 21. Okay. So it was just a couple years ago. She's only, <laughs> she hasn't been here very long. Yes. <laughs> long enough to get a, a feel for our country, right? Tell me. That is true. Yeah. So Deepa um, studied food science and nutrition um, in India and the focus and the roots of it, the culinary practices were rooted in a very holistic approach to, approach to health, right? The approach for official name is Ayurveda. That's um, a whole world of study and a life in itself, but it's a very holistic approach to health and includes a lot about nutrition. So what I wanna ask is, what is your experience with the prenatal and the gestational period and the postnatal part for women um, and nutrition in, in particular? Okay, so um, uh, the, the prenatal care, which is, you know, before a couple gets pregnant is very important because what we eat during those times affect next two generations. That's how important nutrition affects your body and, 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 and you know, the, the whole, uh, Epigenetic is, is based on that, that how we modify our genes using food. And if so, the impact of nutrition is very profound. And the, the health of not only women, but, but men is also equally important, right? So there are, there are a couple areas where there's a lot of emphasis is given which is what women is eating if she if she plans if she's planning to get pregnant and but what what is fascinating is the 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 diet protocol that is that you are required to follow during pregnancy uh, which is your gestational and then um, postnatal which which is after you deliver the baby and uh, you talked about holistic approach, right, uh, Meryl? And the whole healthcare system is more holistic. We have homeopathy doctors and Ayurvedic doctors and, and allopathy, allopathic doctors, which are the traditional medicine. They all work, I wouldn't say hand in hand, but they exist uh, uh, in the, in side the by community. Side. Yeah. Side by side, yeah, exactly. They exist, so a, 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 a patient has choice and the instinct, culturally, the instinct is to always look for some alternate medicine uh, before going to the, uh, to the allopathic doctor. But again, the diseases of, 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 of India as a developing country are more, you know, at least used to be more infectious diseases. Yes. So, yes. so for infectious disease, you need, for acute care, you need acute treatment, right? Like something that is injured. But now, as the diabetes and gestational diabetes has uh, has gone up in in uh, in places like India. By the way, India came across as a, a country who who uses most amount of sugar, 
not a statistic to be proud of, mm. but an important one because that is going to affect the maternal health and beyond, which is, which is really sad because our traditional food uh, that is offered during pregnancy and, and during breastfeeding is really good. Okay, so, uh, and it is, it is also important to notice that this eating for two uh, is also kind of monitored, okay? Uh, in the sense, the portion sizes that you are supposed to eat in the first three months of pregnancy, six months pregnancy, and then last uh, three months, you know, your trimester, last trimester, is also there is there is a thought process to that as well, wow. and you you will be fascinated by this. That emphasis is on exposing the women. If you look at the traditional platter, we call it a thali, we you know which has um, few things on the left hand side which are served in like a teaspoon uh, measures, and then on the right hand side you have your um, dal which is your beans and 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 then your vegetable and then you have your rice and the center you have the the outer center you have little bit of salt followed by lemon and then there are different kind of chutneys and i think this chutney so so if, if i were to serve my by the way my grandmother is 101 year old if I were to serve my in my grandmother or even my mom or my my even my sister-in-law food where I'm just taking the plate and just dumping things, they won't like it because oh. there is there is a way uh, about how we position the food in what what amount. The chutneys are never to be eaten on uh, in larger quantities because the chutneys are very spicy. Uh, they are very potent, you know, and uh, there is a science to not only what you eat, how you eat, and how much you eat. Wow. So, that is just fascinating. I love this. Wow. Okay. So there so, is a science to it. So for a yeah. pregnant woman or a woman, let's say we're in the prenatal period, what would be a typical <laughs> meal for a woman who is thinking about getting pregnant? So thinking about getting pregnant would be lots of greens, okay? And in, in India, we have very powerful greens like uh, dill and a lot of vegetables which fall into the watercress family. They are, they are little bitter, they are little intense. Uh, the, so those, colocasia is a very iron rich vegetable that is, uh, that they, that, you are encouraged to eat and again, and again lentils and beans and all that stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so so yeah. if you i mean if i want to look at it from science point of view folate and iron rich exactly food. yes yeah. yes yes so for in america typically a woman would be maybe taking prenatal vitamins or starting if, if she was focused on that and folate would be super important right they tell yeah. you take your folic acid make yeah. sure you're eating your green vegetables and that's to keep the spinal column for the baby, right? To, to avoid spinal defects and stuff like that. Yeah. So then as you move forward, say the young lady does get pregnant, <clears throat> then what's a typical meal like? Does it change trimester to trimester or how's it yes. go? So in the first trimester, you know, the baby is very small. You are not supposed to eat a whole lot of food. But again, this pattern kind of continues over, um, flows into the first trimester. The second trimester, the amount goes up. You are encouraged to eat a couple more uh, snacks. So the second, the kind of the second, middle of the second trimester and the last trimester, uh, trimester, you are getting ready for, uh, for you know, your supply for breast milk and so on and so forth. And, and the baby is also growing at a very high rate. So, so there's more emphasis on on whole grain millets, okay? Then there is emphasis on eating dates, uh, different kind of seeds, uh, sesame seeds and, and uh, poppy seeds and those type of things. So, so they are encouraged to eat little more um, high fat 
whole fruits. I'm not talking about cheese sticks and, and uh, you know, cream cheese and sour cream here. I'm talking about more whole food sources of, of healthy fats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, just like everything else, the, 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 the fats of the world, you know, the, the excessive oils and, you know, <clears throat> ghee and all that has sneaked into these recipes. Yes. But if we, like, like you were saying, um, when we were talking earlier, that we cannot go back to just three generations, but maybe we need to go back to six generations to really understand our uh, diet DNA, so to speak, and, and look at the recipes uh, that far away. But I think uh, if we look at that, then there won't be so much oil and, and uh, excessive added fat and sugar, processed sugar added to these recipes. Right. So, right. and interestingly, not so much milk was pushed. Okay, so uh, so again, a lot of whole grains, but in millet format, again, depend, depending on where you are from, uh, ragi millet is, a, is, is very high in calcium, a lot of ragi based uh, dishes and, and again, greens and beans and, uh, but I, and, and lot of flavor. There would be like we use, we make chutney using bitter melon. So there is, exp, there, your baby is exposed to bitter melon, which is a bitter taste. Then of course there's spice in everything, you know, that, uh, that is been cooked. So there will be another small chutney maybe made with peanuts and sesame seeds on the side, or they make chutneys out of flax seeds. And then there is a salad, uh, either the cucumbers or butternut squash, uh, one of tomatoes, radishes, those type of salad. And then you have flavorful bowl of dal and, and, and rice or roti, hopefully with, with whole, flour, whole wheat flour, and, and, and on the right, you have your curry, you know, either the dry or wet curry. So you can imagine the, the, the flavor profile here. Uh, it's, sounds rich. Oh. It, it's, it's very rich. Mm. So, so that is what happens in, in during the first and I mean, second half of the second trimester and the third trimester. And then after the baby is born, the first thing that they do is, which is, so it's such, such a luxury uh, is mom and uh, mom and the baby stays with the mother of the mom's like, you know, mother's mother, okay. basically, at least for the first one or two babies. And um, she's, she gets full rest, meals are prepared for her. And there is a person, I mean, they don't call her massage therapist, but she's literally a, a a person who knows how to massage the baby and and the mom and she visits every single day oh my goodness she gives, she gives massage oh, that is a luxury oh my goodness <laughs> every single day to the baby and and uh, the mother and also gives them a hot water bath mm -hmm. And, and so they, this feeds into the whole stress management issue of, of you know, uh, of, of, of the mom and, you know, deal, dealing with the postpartum depression and all that stuff, because she's not feeling lonely, there's people around her to, to support her. I mean, you talk about it takes a village to raise a child. This is exactly, if I reflect back, it does take a village to, I mean, that, that effort starts from that point onwards. And, and to improve the breastfeeding, again, a lot of uh, the, the, the day starts with uh, porridge type of, almost it can be oatmeal porridge or uh, something similar, oatmeal or uh, ragi porridge or any other kind of millet based porridge or cracked wheat based porridge because remember breastfeeding requires breast milk requires a lot of liquid okay and and uh, so that combined with again poppy seeds and coconut this nutri nutritionally dense foods okay because breastfeeding is very taxing on on the mother and uh, you know there's a lot of blood loss and so on and so forth so it's so it's important that the the diet supports 
and takes into account the losses that has been occurred. And small frequent meals and, uh, uh, and small frequent meals are given. We make something called laddu, which is basically a, a date ball. You can see, yeah. you know how we have the balls here now. Yeah. So they are made out of, oh, interestingly, a lot of guar gum is used, okay? Uh, because guar gum is, is, is pectin, basically. It's a prebiotic fiber. And I think they use that because it helps with constipation and the GI health. Mm -hmm. they, they may be going wrong by frying it i think that's where they go wrong mm -hmm. but i think guar if, again if i take the ingredients pretty pretty wholesome ingredients because it has wheat flour and it has a little bit of jaggery and 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 this guar gum uh -huh. they also make these date balls with seeds and nuts uh, that is done uh, poppy seeds poppy seed balls are also very uh, important and then they um, make this, uh, what you can call it, like um, almost like a broth or a tea. Tea, tea is probably a better uh, word for it, which is which has um, anise seeds, fennel seeds, mm -hmm. because those are supposed to reduce flatulence in in the baby. Oh, okay. So. Um, and and lot of, of again water and liquid and you know we call it rasam which is a thin thin dal and heavy heavy to digest foods are avoided so so certain kind of lentils are avoided chickpeas are avoided because they are hard to digest so uh, foods or dals or legumes which are easy to digest are usually prescribed. Okay, tell me I know we only have a few minutes left. Just tell me really quickly, you explained to me once about um, the, the level of spice that's in the food that a mom postpartum is eating and how the baby gets exposed to the different flavors and um, it, it, through the breast milk. Tell, me, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So uh, nobody really changes the level of spice for, for the mom and once the baby is babies out you know by by age by age one or even six to eight months um, the baby pretty much is exposed to eating they may not eat the um, as much amount or the chutneys and stuff but the first baby food is not bland let me tell you okay it has turmeric it has a little bit of ginger it has a little bit of garam masala you know and by age one one and a half they're eating the same chili so based crazy. spice based diet and so so do the pregnant women you know i mean uh, the the spice level really doesn't change unless somebody is exhibiting very severe uh, heartburn and so on and so forth mm -hmm. but again i also feel now knowing what i know or what i've seen with patients is the heartburn doesn't come with the spices the heartburn comes when we take the spices and add it add it in the fat ah. or combine it with the fat is the fat in digestion not the spices. That is my, you can almost say a clinical observation. Here. Okay. 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 So, yeah. so people say, oh, spicy food bothers me. I'm like, no, no, no. Spicy food is not bothering you. If you're eating spicy samosa and if, look, look where that spice has come from. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, so that's why the mother and the baby gets exposed to all the spices, different kind of taste, sweet, sour, umami, uh, salty uh, and uh, pungent. spicy. Yeah. Pungent, exactly. Pungent uh, through the pregnancy. I will tell you something. Uh, the the uh, working, working, uh, working class women, okay, which are um, underserved, let's say, but these in India, the, the, or economically, socio-economically deprived. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. those women, they have the most nutritious diet on this planet. Mm. Do you know what they eat? What do they eat? They, they eat millets, okay, which are relatively cheaper compared to wheat and rice in India. Hmm. 
the moringa leaves or moringa moringa trees are uh, everywhere um, you know in every town and every city and every you know moringa mm. is very common yeah they make this stir fry with moringa not much oil now you know moringa is sold here god knows 30 super food yes. or something it's like super food they take this moringa leaves they stir fry it or they or they will put a big pot of uh, water uh, to boil and they add all kinds of vegetables and little bit of beans and little bit of rice in there and it's it's that wonderful stew with some mm. spices and mm. that's it that's it they deliver babies without any anesthesia without any jazz by the roadside wow okay wow. remember guys maternal mortality the deaths due to Uh, the deaths among pregnant women during pregnancy after pregnancy is high in america yes. we are in top 3 which is horrible not a proud statistics to be uh, to to even say yeah so there is definitely something wrong yeah yeah you know? and that that moringa and they also make millet they they take the leftover millet roti which is a bread they will uh, next day they will uh, turn it into a powder with their hands mm. okay and add water and maybe some more spices maybe some more milk if they have any or or butter milk and that's their breakfast nice yeah and these This women cool. are not overweight they they breastfeed they carry their child on the back and they are doing construction work mm. wow you can't say they are uh, uh, you know they are they are not physically active or fit right right yeah not weak at all yeah or not weak at all yeah very different picture from how pregnant women are portrayed <clears throat> and managed in the united states here we we focus on um yeah eat healthy but that's going to include cow's milk every day you know meat and um and of course whatever junk, like yes process and your prenatal vitamins and your you know so um yeah very very different picture and a very very different outcome to a lot of the pregnancies yeah. like you were just saying right very high mortality among the the women correct yeah exactly wow so, so powerful i love the idea that <clears throat> excuse me that the babies get exposed to all kinds of peppers and seasonings from very very early on um yeah. their their palates are not narrowed at all their palate for flavors is wide and um yeah they they can take all of that and 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 appreciate it and eat it and love it as opposed to what happens here in America a lot of kids we start out with these pablum right yeah. rice cereal <clears throat> and all the food is very very narrowly defined and bland and bland bland very bland and highly processed i mean um, the the uh, just a quick side note sure, even sure. baby's first food you know is lentils we roast lentils or we will roast uh, some um, some millet and it's ground and just it is cooked with little bit of of course everything has turmeric i don't know i mean if, if it's the turmeric effect or what but definitely people have stronger immune systems yes um so little bit of turmeric or maybe little bit of ginger goes into that little, that porridge and uh, uh then and it gets cooked in the pressure cooker uh and then every day they will change the vegetable in it one day it will be a piece of uh, okra in it it will be squash it could be beet so that's how they they expose the uh, uh, not patient but the, the baby. children child yeah. babies to this different color and texture and you know before you know the baby is eating everything, everything that uh, everything. the mom and dad and grandparents are eating it's actually very fascinating to see um how yeah, how amazing how how it evolves really i love that i love that thank you so much i know that we're on a tight time frame and you have something else you have to take care of thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom and your experience i just love no. that
it's yeah. it's it's absolutely fascinating and one thing i want to uh, also talk about is not only flavor but texture is also important mm. okay you know so, so babies are not given everything mushy okay they are given <laughs> so yeah there is a reason that that teeth come out you know there is a reason so so yeah, and they don't give uh, those plastic rings and pacifiers and all that to suck on it, it's always maybe a you know um, of course when baby start, starts to sit like cucumber or or hard carrot or even uh, mm, like a, 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 a beet like a raw beet yeah. slice because it's very it's it, it's pretty tough you know beet yes. is tough to chew on so of course you you are uh, you have to be careful that the child is not choking on it but right. but you know just so the, the the child gets i mean think of it you know for, from the coordination point of view right very good uh, finger eye coordination and uh, those movements with your finger and just that independent uh, thinking to to try different foods and you know um, all that good stuff that comes with following these simple cultural habits uh, of course quite a bit of this has has lost has gotten lost now because of the the influence of processed food what can i say Yes, yes. And it's it's influence of Western cultures, right? Yeah. And that's a lot of it. Absolutely. But we know um, the history of India is long and deep and very profound. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. And Ayurveda is, a, like I said, a world of its own, you know. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you go back to what you were doing. Thank you for um, slipping me in for, uh, you know, a couple of few minutes to share this whole. Yeah. So gorgeous. We could talk about this for hours. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll do a, maybe a cooking demo. Who knows? You know, oh, I like that cook together. So we can yeah. we can do a Thali episode oh. where I, we can cook and I can show you how 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 beautiful it is even to look at, you know, and there is a system. Oh, I love that. Um, and it's it's so important and it makes you mindful. This is all about becoming mindful, really. You know, that yeah. hey, what the choices you are making has some sort of an effect on your body. And if you if you are carrying a child, then moving it forward. So yes, yes, so true. So true. Food is about more than just cramming it in your mouth. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's about exactly. the nourishment and the practice and the mindfulness and what you're eating. So important. Yeah. All right, Miss Deepa, okay. we will talk again soon. Thank you, Thank you again. You have a great, great Thank day. You. <laughs> See you soon. Thank you, my pleasure. Bye-bye. Um,